Roberts? Like, what is happening? Don't they know it's the end of the world? For the first time in my entire life, watch me not screw this YouTube video up. I'm Misha, and I don't often do YouTube videos, as you guys have noticed, but I'm trying to get back into it. Gather round, children. We're about to hear story time. I noticed that these are widely popular now on YouTube, and I think that that is freaking awesome because this is probably the only thing I'm good at, which is telling stories, because I have a lot of those. <laughs> This is the time I attacked Evan Peters, also known as the time I ran into his car. So I guess it could be technically clickbait, because no, I didn't fight him, I didn't hit him with an umbrella. Um, I don't have any violent feelings towards Evan Peters, that wasn't what happened here. But, um, so if you guys know me, you know that I used to be obsessed with him. Like, freshman year of high school, sophomore year of high school, little bit of junior, I was like, American Horror Story is my life, um, Evan Peters is gonna bother my children, that kind of thing. And I know that I don't look at the camera at all. I'm very sorry about that. I'm looking at the little viewfinder over here. Not even a viewfinder. I have a Nikon and I have a mirror behind it and I just look at it. My eyes are getting watery because I don't do YouTube videos anymore and I feel so dorky talking to a camera right now. But anyways, so this is a true story. I'm gonna insert some evidence later on in the story, but this was Paley Fest. I think it was like 2014 or 2013. Um, this was the first one that I went to and I went with my friend Miranda. And um, this was at a theater in LA and we were so excited to go. Um, so it was kind of a big deal. Like I went and I had a really bad cold. Um, the, that morning I woke up and I was so excited to go to Paley Fest, but I was really sick, so my mom like kept me from going to school. She knew I had this like big thing that I had to go to later and we were trying to like rest up. And it was that kind of sickness where you're like blowing your nose constantly and you're achy and you're fatigued. Not like I was pukey, not like I was nauseous, thank God. But I was just so achy and tired and like my body just like where you just lie there and you're just comatose and you're like, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to move. I can't even lift my head. It was that kind of sickness. So um, my friend Miranda and her mom picks me up at like like 3.30 because we had to drive to LA, which isn't that long. It's like a 50 minute drive. But it was also like later in the day, so that means people are getting off work, people are getting out of school. There's gonna be a little bit of traffic. And I feel ridiculous right now because I'm like sitting like a dork. This is how this is how we YouTube here. It's just me chilling on like a poof, a poof seat. Cause I don't have a normal setup. Um, <laughs> um but I'm waiting for them to pick me up and I'm all dressed up. I'm dressed to like the nines for a um like a sophomore in uh, a sophomore in high school I had like brown hair at the time and I got like an outfit at Nordstrom's and I was so excited I thought I looked really good and I, I knew he was like dating Emma Roberts so I wanted to like look like Emma Roberts because that was like when people had started telling me I looked like her so I did my best I did my best Emma Roberts outfit and like in my head I was so stupid I was like oh my god he's gonna see me what if he thinks I'm his girlfriend and I lo and behold like I don't look that, at least I don't think I look much like Emma Roberts, but I went through this phase where everyone was telling me that, so I got really excited. Um, so I was just like, maybe he'll think I look like her, like who knows. So um, we go to this thing and um, we run in, like we were planning on meeting, you know, my friend Courtney from the Violet Harmon Clothes video. Uh, this is the first time I met Courtney, which was here, and I met her mom too. And like we walk in, and Courtney like was dressed like the grunge princess that she was at the time, and she like just ran up to me and hugged me, and I didn't even know who she was at first, and I was like, oh my god, I was like, whoa, and it was so exciting. And um, like it's just a normal Paley Fest, like pit pissed myself in my seat. I just took a dump everywhere. I was so excited. I was like a little chihuahua with diarrhea, and. Um, like, I'm sitting in the room and we're on this, like, balcony. We have the worst seats in the world. Courtney and her mom are sitting in front of us. I'm sitting with Miranda and her mom. Miranda and her mom. Miranda's mom and Miranda's little sister have, like, even worse seats, like, somewhere really far away. And, um, it's just, like, 
<laughs> this was like a seat yourself day. This is before they used to like assign seats and you could buy good seats. But they walk in, walk on the stage, and I'm screaming. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like that's him in person. Like there's Jessica Lang in person. Um, it, most exciting moment of my life. And by this, by the next time I went to Paley Fest, I felt seasoned. I was like, oh, I've done this before. Like, oh, Evan Peters, Psh, not a big deal. I've, I've done this. So this was the first time. So I'm, I can't contain how flipping excited I am. Um, so the whole time you're kind of sitting on the edge of your seat because you want to touch them and you want to meet them. And like you're waiting for question time, like you're excited they're doing their interviews, you're like waiting for that. And we're on the freaking balcony, so we know we have to take off the second it's over because we have to run down there and like run all the way down the stairs and try to shove through all the people because we want to get autographs. And um, it's just not working out because um, we're like we know, like they're asking questions, and right away, like the only questions people are asking are, can I touch your hair? Like, can I bring you this gift? Can I come up there and hug you? And the interviewer is getting increasingly like annoyed and all this stuff. So we're just, we just want to touch Evan Peters. Like that's all we want. We just want to caress his face. We want to like, like tickle Sarah Paulson. This is like after Asylum. This is their Asylum panel. Um, we just, we, we want to tickle them. So. <laughs> It's just not working out. We, we know that we're hopeless, but the second it ends, we like take off and we run down there. Our little short, like five foot one legs are carrying us down the stairs. And I'm like doing my Emma Roberts thing. I'm really sick and really fatigued and tired. And I'm wearing like six inch heels and I'm still sprinting like an idiot because you know what? I gotta touch him. I gotta get his signature or something. So we go down there, Courtney, gets a bunch of signatures. She like gets a whole freaking book, booklet filled with signatures and all these interactions. I get a Sarah Paulson autograph, which I was pretty excited about. But Evan just like walks right by, doesn't even like acknowledge me. So I'm like, whatever, like life is over. And they leave and everyone else leaves. There are like a couple people just standing in the theater and it's just me and Miranda and her mom and her little sister and we're just kind of standing there like dumbfounded like did this happen like was he really like a foot away from us could we have touched him please keep in mind i don't feel the same way about evan peters now like if i saw him in person on the street i kind of be a little bit excited because i'd be like wow i like would have peed my pants before but now it's just like whatever but then oh my god <laughs> oh my god i was crazy so, biggest fangirl ever. So we're just like standing there and I kind of just like cry. I like curl up in a ball and I sit in a seat and I'm just like kind of like, <laughs> I didn't even get to touch him. <laughs> he didn't like comment on how I looked like Emma Roberts. Like what is happening? <laughs> so I was really upset, obviously. Um, that didn't work out. And I was just really sad and a security guard comes over and he's like, so, you, did you guys get to see them? And we're like, no. <laughs> he walked right past me. And he's like, well, I shouldn't be telling you this. So instantly, I'm like, what? I lean forward. I'm really theatrical right now. I'm so hyper, I'm sorry, I just had coffee. But anyways, I'm so excited. I'm like, what is happening? What do you have to say to me? And he tells us, well, they're, they're leaving out back. They're like sneaking out. If you hurry and you go down to the exit, you might be able to see them. So quickly, like we don't even ask her mom if it's okay. And we're like 15, we're like 15 or 16 years old. Um, Miranda and I just take off and we sprint down. And I don't know if Courtney's still with us at this point. I think she and her mom left because Courtney, Courtney always wins. Like it doesn't matter what she's doing. Courtney just always gets what she wants. She like gets all the exacts, she gets all the Violet Harmon stuff, she gets all the signatures, like she'll get freaking like, I don't know. She's just, I, I'm surprised, I would be surprised if she didn't get a fucking invitation to, sorry for that word, she'd get an invitation to like go lick all their faces and like go hang out with the cast one day. So she's gone, but we sprint, we're like desperate. We didn't get any, Miranda didn't get anything. Cause that's, that's the thing about Miranda. I always get the middle point and then Miranda like, 
the f in, within the fandom, she didn't get anything, so she never was like big in the fandom. She just loved the show and loved it to herself. So anyways, like I'm obsessed, so we're running, and we get there, and like there are a couple girls like standing on the corner, they don't know what's going on, and I'm like, did you see them? Were they here? And they're like, who are you talking about? What's going on? And I'm like, the security guard told us that Emma Roberts, or not Emma Roberts, that Evan Peters and like Sarah Paulson and everyone was coming out this way. So they're like, oh my god, oh my god. So we're standing there and the gate opens and a big security guard comes out and he's like, stand back, like, back up, like the car is leaving, the car is leaving. And we know it's freaking Evan Peters. Like, we know who it is. We see like the little window roll down. We see the top of his little head and and there's someone in the car with him. I think it was Emma. Like, I'm 99% sure Emma was there. And so, I have photo evidence of just me smacking into the car. This is like the end of the story. I just fucking, sorry for the F-bomb again. I run into the car. I just couldn't contain myself. I don't know what I expected to accomplish because I didn't get anything out of it. I had like a hundred and three degree fever. I was exhausted. I peed my pants several times that day. I was just a walk-in like bag of sad fluid. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? I give up. I give up on life. Like if this is how I die, if Evan Peters, the, the big black car, like the driver hits me, I'm okay with this. This is how I die and I accept it. So I just clonk. I run right into that car, and my life ends, and I die. And that, that was the day I died. Evan Peters ran over me with a car. Um, so this is not the day I attacked Evan Peters. That has yet to come, but this is the day I ran into the freaking car. And I know it's not that interesting of a story time, like, because I bounced off the car and the girls were like, what the heck? Like, why did you do that? And the security guard is like, you need to chill out, like, back off, back off. And I'm just kind of like, I'm not like freaking out like, oh, oh. I was just a crazy person. Like I had a solid face and I just ran into the car, like banged my body against it. And that was it. I just, then I, after I just hit myself against it, I just like stepped back and was just like, that happened. So I, I wasn't like crying, like I wasn't hyperventilating, I just hit myself into a car. And then I cried a little bit later, like we went to like a McDonald's and got cheeseburgers and I went into the bathroom and I kind of cried to myself and I was like, that happened. <laughs> I just threw myself against his vehicle and I had my camera open so that's why I have a bunch of pictures. Like as I'm doing it, I'm what I'm thinking is like I'll get my phone up to the crack and I'll like take a picture of him or like I'll put it against the glass and I'll be able to like see into the car or maybe he'll roll down his window like when I hit the car and be like are you okay? None of that happened so I was just taking pictures like please, please let a miracle happen. Please let me get a picture of him but now it's just slow progression as the car gets closer, me throwing myself against it, like almost like, like against the hood of the car, like, take me with you, <laughs> don't leave. I thought I was gonna be a hero, I thought I'd stop the car and they'd look out and be like, are you okay, or you're crazy, and we'd at least see him like roll down the window and be like, you're a psycho, I'm getting a restraining order, but you know what, nothing happened. So. I hope that wasn't like, I, I don't want to be like a clickbait person. I don't think that was clickbait because I still technically did that. But that was my story time. The time I ran, rammed my body into Evan Peters driver's car while he was in the back seat. And it probably happens to him a lot now. So he probably will never remember the significant time a small brunette girl rammed her body into his car. But you know what? I think that was a special moment for him and I. And I'll always remember. And I totally forgot to say this, but please comment below, please subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Because I'm trying to get back at it, and I need your approval to have a fulfilling life. Bye guys. Why does this